We believe civilization has a timeline. Stone tools, bronze, iron, writing. But what happens when objects appear where they shouldn't exist? When the ground yields artefacts that predate the cultures capable of making them? These aren't isolated incidents. They emerge from permafrost in Siberia, desert sands in Peru, lake beds in North America. Each one forces us to reconsider not just a single chapter of human history, but the entire book. The first discovery happened by accident, during a routine drilling operation on the shore of a frozen lake, July 1872, Belknap County, New Hampshire. Workers were installing a water pipe near Lake Winnipesaukee. At a depth of 12 feet, the drill bit struck something solid. Inside the clay and silt, they extracted a dark ceramic egg-shaped object, six inches long, covered in carved symbols. The foreman, Seneca Ladd, documented the find and sent it to the American Antiquarian Society in Worcester, Massachusetts. The object is now catalogued as item 19560. The soil layer dates to 2500 BCE based on stratigraphic analysis. No Native American culture in the region used ceramics at that time. The Mystery Lake Stone Egg remains in the Museum of New Hampshire History. In 2003, researchers attempted to decode the symbols using pattern recognition software. No matches were found in any database of ancient scripts. Amateur archaeologists continue to photograph and analyse it. Academic institutions rarely discuss it in official publications. The object exists in a strange space between accepted history and unexplained reality. We build timelines to organise the past, but sometimes the past refuses to fit. The lake gave up one secret in 1872. How many more lie buried beneath our certainty? History is written by those who survived to tell it. But what about those who vanished before the story began? In 1900, Greek sponge divers found a Roman shipwreck off Antikythera Island. Among amphoras and statues lay corroded bronze fragments. Nobody understood their significance until 1902, when archaeologist Valerios Stace noticed a gear wheel embedded in the mass. The device was transferred to the National Archaeological Museum in Athens, catalogue number X, 15,087. Scientists assumed it was an astrolabe. X-ray analysis in 1974 revealed 30 interlocking bronze gears inside. The mechanism calculated astronomical positions, predicted eclipses, and tracked the Olympic game cycle. The precision required knowledge of differential gearing, not reinvented until the 14th century. The ship sank around 60 BCE, but the device's design suggests construction between 150 to 100 BCE. The engineering is impossible. Bronze gears this complex shouldn't exist for another 1,500 years. Some objects don't belong to their location. In 1936, a couple hiking near London, Texas discovered a wooden handle protruding from limestone rock. Inside the stone was an iron hammerhead partially embedded. The rock formation dates to the Cretaceous period, over 100 million years old. Geologist John Mackay examined it in 1983. The hammer measures six inches with a wooden handle turned to stone through mineral replacement. Metallurgical analysis showed the iron contained 96.6% .6 purity with traces of chlorine, an unusual composition. Modern smelting rarely achieves this without sophisticated refinement. The wood petrification suggested the hammer was already ancient when encased. Critics argue the rock formed around a recent object through rapid concretion, a process possible in mineral-rich water. But the stone's density and the handle's complete fossilisation contradict quick formation. The hammer resides in the Creation Evidence Museum. No geological consensus exists. Either our dating methods fail, or someone forged iron before dinosaurs disappeared. Technology leaves signatures. In 1998, electrical worker John Williams discovered a three-pronged electrical connector embedded in granite while hiking in rural North America. The component appeared industrial, with ceramic material fused directly into the stone matrix. Williams documented the find, with photographs showing the connector partially exposed from weathered rock. Geologists who examined images estimated the granite at thousands of years old based on erosion patterns. The connector design resembles modern electronic components with metal prongs spaced for circuit board insertion. 
no oxidation appeared on the metal portions, suggesting an alloy resistant to corrosion. The ceramic housing showed no tool marks or casting seams. Skeptics immediately called it a hoax, claiming Williams planted a modern part in cracked stone and fabricated the story. He refused to surrender the object for independent testing, keeping it in private possession. Without laboratory verification, authentication remains impossible. Either this represents an elaborate deception or an artefact suggesting electrical technology existed in prehistoric times. The truth died with Williams in 2011. Mountains hold secrets longer than valleys. In 1991, German hikers Helmut and Erika Simon found a frozen corpse emerging from melting ice in the Utstel Alps near the Austrian-Italian border at 10,530 feet elevation. Police initially treated it as a modern death. Archaeologist Conrad Spindler identified the body as ancient. Carbon dating placed death at 3,300 BCE, making him Europe's oldest natural mummy. The man carried a copper axe with 99.7% purity, requiring smelting technology, supposedly non-existent in the Copper Age. His clothing showed advanced tailoring. Leather coat, bearskin hat, waterproof shoes stuffed with grass insulation. Tattoos marked his body at acupuncture points, identified by Chinese medicine 2,000 years later. Pollen analysis revealed he travelled between multiple elevation zones in his final days. Most disturbing, an arrowhead lodged in his shoulder, traces of four different human blood types on his gear and defensive wounds, suggesting combat. Someone murdered him, then civilization forgot his existence for five millennia. Stone remembers what humans forget. In 1935, paleontologist Roland T. Bird investigated reports of giant tracks in the Paluxy River bed near Glen Rose, Texas. The limestone preserved dinosaur footprints from 113 million years ago. Alongside the three-toed theropod prints, Bird found elongated depressions resembling human footprints, some measuring 15 inches long. Creationists claimed this proved humans and dinosaurs coexisted. Geologists argued the prints resulted from erosion, misidentified dinosaur tracks, or deliberate carving during the depression when locals sold fossils to tourists. Detailed analysis in the 1000, 980 seconds showed some prints were clearly carved fakes. Others remained ambiguous. The controversy intensified when similar tracks appeared in Turkmenistan and other locations. Each site faced the same questions. Natural erosion patterns, ancient hoaxes, or genuine anomalies? The Paluxy tracks attract researchers annually, but no consensus exists. The riverbed continues eroding, destroying evidence before questions find answers. What remains are photographs, plaster casts, and doubt about what walked there. The desert preserves what water destroys. In 1996, archaeologist Ruth Shady excavated Corral in Peru's Supi Valley, 50 miles north of Lima. Radiocarbon dating revealed the city existed around 2600 BCE, contemporary with Egypt's pyramids. But Carroll showed no pottery, no weapons, no fortifications. The civilization built massive stone platforms, amphitheatres and residential complexes without warfare or ceramics. Most puzzling were the quipu, knotted strings used for recording information. Previously thought invented by the Inca around 1400 CE, Carroll's quipu predated them by 4000 years. The knots encoded mathematical data, possibly astronomical observations or trade records. No one has fully deciphered the system. Carroll's inhabitants cultivated cotton, beans and squash using irrigation networks spanning miles. They created music using bone flutes and traded with coastal communities. Then around 1800 BCE, they abandoned everything. No signs of conquest, disease or environmental collapse explain why. The city stands empty, its knowledge systems lost, challenging everything we assume about civilization's requirements.